Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and this is your stimulus check update for the next stimulus package for Wednesday, December 2nd. I hope everyone is off to a good and safe start to their Wednesday so far. In this video, I'll be discussing updates in regards to the next relief package and the second stimulus check. I'll also be discussing unemployment, the newest bipartisan proposal created by the Senate, and then I'll be wrapping up this video by answering some of the comments and questions I received in my previous video. But first, if you wouldn't mind real quickly liking this video, give me a big thumbs up. It really just helps with the YouTube algorithm in terms of pushing this video out to other viewers like you and hopefully helping other people like you as well. Okay, so a new stimulus proposal has just been introduced as a bipartisan group of senators came up with a plan of around $900 billion. Since negotiations between Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Steven Mnuchin, and Mitch McConnell weren't really going anywhere, rank-and-file members of the Senate decided to step in. In the plan, it's being rumored that the unemployment benefits would be extended for another four months at $300 per week. In addition to that, the proposal includes roughly $288 billion in small business aid, such as the Paycheck Protection Program. $160 billion is also included for state and local government relief, which was a key measure for Democrats. There would also be $45 billion for transportation agencies, $82 billion for education, $26 billion in nutrition assistance, and $16 billion in vaccine distribution. Additionally, there is also a liability shield, which would protect businesses, schools, and hospitals from being sued in relation to the virus. And then something, well, a very big thing that was not included in this proposal is a second round of stimulus payments. How on earth are you going to leave out something that's going to help so many American families? I think Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib summed it up pretty well in her tweet, saying the fact that no stimulus checks is on this list shows the disconnect of the Senate with people on the ground. There may not be bipartisan support for an additional check, but there is support outside of Congress. Seven out of ten want direct payments. Tlaib, in my opinion, hit the nail right on the head. To not include a second round of stimulus payments in the next bill is pure insanity. However, I can't really say I'm too concerned because this is just another proposal which is more than likely either going to change or just fall apart completely. How many proposals have we seen in the past that have died the next week? It's possible this will be just another proposal that Nancy Pelosi steps in and says is not good enough because $900 billion isn't enough to fight the virus. In fact, most congressional aides already have the expectation that this bill isn't going to go anywhere. We're going to be facing opposition from liberals who are opposed to the liability shield. Then we're also going to be facing opposition from conservatives who may think the aid for state and local government is simply too high. So I really don't think this proposal will go anywhere. And even if it does, I do expect that it will change for the better. I really don't expect any bill to pass without another round of stimulus payments in it. There's just no way, in my opinion, at least. Still though, it's sort of a relief to see that the two sides are still trying. Even though we haven't heard too much from the negotiations between Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell, it's still refreshing to see other lawmakers step in and try to take some sort of action, even if it doesn't include everything that we want in their proposal. It's at the very least, a start. Honestly, it's refreshing to see some new faces step up to the plate. Steven Mnuchin, Nancy Pelosi, and Mitch McConnell just weren't getting it done. There's absolutely no reason they should be given any more power than any of the other lawmakers to make these sort of deals. Mitt Romney, one of the rank and file members who created the bipartisan deal, said that even though he's a deficit hawk, he supports the bill because it's not some $1.8 trillion bill. Romney said this is a relief measure, half that amount. He also mentioned that the $908 billion price tag is misleading because it actually repurposes $560 billion from the CARES Act. The amount of new money spent is actually only $348 billion. Well, if that's the case, you could technically add in just another $300 billion for a second round of stimulus payments, and the bill would still be less than $650 billion. So let's hope that our lawmakers will really hone in on this proposal and just make it better. With our lawmakers having just a couple more weeks before they leave once again for the Christmas recess, we have to hope that they can reach some type of compromise very soon. If we want to see any chance of passing more relief before the end of this year, something has to get done within the next couple of weeks. Time is quickly running out, and it's time for the two sides to put their differences aside, put their egos aside, and just get something done. In the description box below, I'll be leaving links where you can contact both Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi. I would strongly encourage everyone, if you have the time, to reach out to them, letting them know just how important another lead package 
is to you and your family. In the meantime, all we can continue to do is hang in there, stay strong, and hope for the best. In unemployment news, according to a government watchdog report, the Department of Labor has been miscounting the number of people receiving unemployment benefits, and they're also underpaying those under a special program. The report said that without an accurate accounting of the number of individuals who were relying on these benefits in as close to real time as possible, policymakers may be challenged to respond to the crisis at hand. One of the biggest issues in weekly reporting is being said to do with case backlogs, which results in counts that are too low. The department is also sometimes counting people repeatedly who file more than one claim, which results in counts that are too high. The Government Accountability Office insists that the department notes in every weekly release that the numbers it reports for weeks of unemployment claimed do not accurately estimate the numbers of unique individuals claiming benefits. The GAO also noted that the expiration of the PUA benefits under the CARES Act that expires later this month may send multiple households below the poverty line. This is definitely something that we don't want to see. So with that said, let's hope that Congress can finally get around to passing another bill to extend these benefits on a longer term, more stable basis. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm going to move right along to answering some of the comments and questions that I received in my previous video. And if you do have any other comments or questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I do try to answer as many of the comments and questions as I possibly can, but for those comments and questions I'm not able to respond to, I do try to pick some of the more popular ones to answer in the next video in video form. Okay, so without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into the first comment of today's video, which is from LK. LK says, Josh, can you please answer a question? When are we supposed to be getting our next stimulus check? Okay, thank you so much for your question, and the timeline for the next stimulus check is still up in the air. Even though both Democrats and Republicans have expressed their desire to send out another round of stimulus payments, they still have disagreements over other things in the package. So unfortunately, until they're able to agree on the overall package, we won't see any bills passed. However, once they are able to reach some type of an agreement and pass a bill, then the second round of stimulus payments will begin to be sent out. Since the IRS already has all of our information from the first round of payments, the good news is that the second round should be going out much quicker this time around. Okay, moving right along to the next question of today's video, which is from Rhonda. Rhonda says, how much would the second check be for? Praying for everyone struggling. Okay, thank you so much for your question, Rhonda, and more than likely, the next check will be once again for $1,200. Even though there have been some proposals for different amounts, including $2,000, they never really ended up gaining too much traction. The proposals that have had the most popularity and therefore are more realistic have included $1,200 stimulus checks. With anything though, of course, that number is always subject to change, and I'll definitely make sure to keep you updated one way or another. Okay, moving right along to the next question today's video, which is from Michael. Michael says, will the unemployment be retroactive if they pass it? If so, how far back? Okay, thank you so much for your question, Michael. And yes, more than likely, if they do pass the next relief package, unemployment will be retroactive to around September 12th. This is the date that has been mentioned in recent proposals. September 12th also happens to be the date in which the benefits ended from the Lost Wages Assistance Program even though not every state received the full six weeks of benefits. However, with anything else, this state is also certainly subject to change, but I'll definitely make sure to keep you updated. All right, moving right along to the last comment of today's video, which is from Deborah. Deborah says, I haven't received my first check. Okay, thank you so much for your comment, Deborah, and I'm so sorry that you still haven't received your first stimulus payment. I know that it definitely can't be easy. Unfortunately, there are still millions of eligible Americans who never ended up receiving their first stimulus payment. This could be for a variety of reasons, with the most likely reason that they haven't filed a tax return within the last two years. If you haven't filed a tax return within the last two years, then you needed to use the non filers tool on the IRS website by November 21st in order to receive your payment this year. And since that deadline has already passed, you'll now more than likely need to claim a $1,200 credit on your tax return next year in order to receive your payment. Now, if you filed a tax return within the last two years, then you should still end up receiving your payment very soon. In the meantime, I'd recommend to just continue checking the payment portal, which will still be your number one resource and finding out exactly when you should expect to receive your payment. 
Alright, so on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you did enjoy the content in this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It is completely free to do so and it's a great support to me. Also, if you'd like to receive two free stocks from Weeble with both stocks valued all the way up to $1,600, please feel free to claim those two free stocks by clicking the link in the description box below. And finally, if you join Rakuten with my referral link in the description box below and spend at least $40 by December 25th, Rakuten will give you $40 cash back. This is just an incredible bonus that I would love for everyone to take advantage of. Okay, so until next time, I'll see you guys and I hope you have a great day today.